Airtable recently made a big announcement of their new AI native Airtable platform. And it essentially consists of two different parts. One is their AI app builder assistant called Omni, and the other are field agents. And while there's been a lot of marketing hype around this release, I wanted to come at it from the perspective, for those of you who've already been using Airtable or you've explored Airtable in the past, what is actually new about this release and what does this say about where Airtable is going as a company? So first let's go ahead and talk about Omni. So when I'm in Airtable now, this becomes essentially a first class citizen. This AI experience is really in your face. It can be toggled off, but instead of just feeling like kind of an add-on, this is pretty much anywhere that we go with an application, we're going to have this baked directly in. And in addition to it being a nice user interface, I find that the performance is typically better than the AI assistant. So when it comes to functionality, the new Omni experience is essentially replacing what we had with Airtable CoBuilder. That was the AI tool that allowed us to generate our own apps and interfaces. And it combines the functionality with the AI assistant. So we don't really need two different tools to be able to build and to be able to update, to be able to chat with our data. That's now all considered part of this Omni tool. When we're starting to build a new app, we now see this option to start with Omni as opposed to start from AI. And the interface is very similar, but you'll see a couple differences here. So you can see there's a couple example prompts or we can put in our own. When we click to build it, the experience is different than previously with CoBuilder. You can see it's giving us information in real time on the left-hand side. And then as it's going to create it, you're going to see the actual tables and fields being populated in real time. This is different than the previous experience where we just kind of see it all populated at the end. Here it's creating a second table and populating it with sample data. And now it's creating our interface for us as well. So the big changes here are that we're seeing it build it in real time. It's giving us direct feedback on the side. And then because we're in this unified experience, now we can make changes to the app as well without having to create it, then go to our data, then open up our assistant and start editing everything. Now we can do this all in one spot with Omni. This is the same interface that I use to chat with my data. So we can ask it questions like what opportunities are likely to close. And there's lots of little Easter eggs, like we can see the records that it's referencing and we can actually click to go to those records themselves. So I really like how Omni is just kind of sitting there and we can ask questions of it. We can make updates when we need to. So overall, this is a nice user experience. Mostly, I feel like we're putting on a coat of paint over these other Airtable AI features that we've already had, but I do feel like it is much more unified than it has been in the past. Here's where I feel like the marketing doesn't really line up with the actual functionality itself. So if you read this press release, this is what went out on LinkedIn and everywhere else. You can see these initial images and video. If I watch through this, the assumption of what I'm seeing here is that these are custom components that we can do all sorts of creative stuff by building apps in Airtable in a way that we couldn't before. And in the press release, they're talking about the AI era and different tools like Cursor and Replit and Lovable. And to be honest, our agency has been using a number of AI builders in addition to, or sometimes in place of Airtable. And so Airtable most likely looks at this as a competitive threat that we need to be able to provide a really nice AI kind of coding experience to be able to compete against these players. But while all of the marketing seems to kind of hint and tease that you can be creating these really custom experiences, at the end of the day, with this release, you're still just using their standard interface builder. Yes, you're creating it through AI, but you're still limited to the components that they have today. Now, this is something that will be changing in the future. Right now, there's a beta program going on to be able to create your own custom extensions, which in the past couldn't be used in interfaces, but now you will be able to. But those extensions still require the ability to code. And while you can connect it to an AI coding environment, such as Cursor, you still need some technical know-how to be able to do that. Now, I certainly imagine in the future, Airtable is going to release more of its own AI vibe coding experience so that you can create your own custom components. But the fact remains that wasn't part of this release and the imagery and videos seem to imply that maybe it's supposed to be. Now, the other part of this release was around field agents. Now, to me, a name like field agents implies agents in the field, not literally just fields in a database that are agentic, which they're not even really agentic, they're just AI fields. And it's crazy to me that these definitions of what AI agents are, are all over the board. Suddenly companies that had super basic workflow automation slap a label and say, we are now an AI agents first platform. 
And unfortunately, that's what I feel like Airtable did here. You can see that this URL is to showcase their AI agents. There's no parsing or mincing of words. They are calling these AI agents. And if you read through all the marketing, this looks great. Hey, we can extract all this information. We can take 10,000 documents. We can research the web for all of this intelligence. We can do all of these things. It looks really good. But in the building experience, this is really taking their existing AI fields and now just relabeling them to field agents. If we edit one of these, you can see you've got a couple different options here. You can enable internet search. And the new thing here is that we can run this automatically. So in the past, we had to press a button to be able to run the AI automation. But now if you import records or create records, it could automatically run in the background. Now that, of course, is going to consume a number of AI credits, but it's an option that you can automate that process. And if you haven't played with their AI fields or now what are called field agents, I don't want to discourage you. There's a lot of powerful stuff you can do. For example, I created a video where we can extract all these details from an invoice. We can create line items. So please don't think I'm hating on the functionality or the fact that this is in the platform. I think those are both great. But taking a look at these marketing examples, you can see them say, hey, we can do thousands of field agents at the same time. And if you take a look at this, each one of those columns, each one of those fields are individual field agents or AI fields. And so they show examples running hundreds of records at the same time. So imagine if you had hundreds of records times 10 of these fields operating at the same time, they're not working in tandem. They're each independently making their own decision, which means you're taking 100 records or 200 records, multiplying it by 10 of those different fields operating at the same time and noticing that each one of those are consuming AI credits for that. That means you're going to have a system that's not very efficient or performant. Because why should I have to take one sales call transcript and if I want five pieces of information extracted from it, have five different AI fields as opposed to one AI agent or one AI action that processes that and then just puts the data in which field it needs to. So from my standpoint as a practitioner, this is a horribly inefficient way to be able to use AI to actually process your data. Now, the good news is that Airtable has changed the way that they price for these AI credits. So in the past, if you wanted to use their AI functionality, you had to pay for an upgraded AI plan on top of the user licenses that you were already paying for. Now you'll see that there's a monthly free credit allowance depending on your plan type. Now it's cool that you can get 500 credits even for the free plan. So it truly is free in a way, though we all know that behind the scenes, we're ultimately paying for this at the end of the day or subsidizing it if we're on a paid plan. So these are the number of credits that you get team is 15,000, business is 20,000, and enterprise is 25,000. Now these credits do expire each month. The nice part is they are pooled across your users, across that workspace. So it doesn't have to be just at the individual user level that you're tracking this. And if you go above your allowance, you're allowed to purchase credit packs. Now I like that way of doing things because I was a little bit nervous that if you went above those allowances, maybe they would force you to upgrade plans in general, your actual user subscriptions. That's not the case. So instead, you just have to buy these AI credit packs. So overall, for field agents, we have a little bit of enhancement that we can run these automatically, but mostly they're the AI fields that we had in the past. If you have a large number of field agents, you're going to be consuming a lot of credits, but you're given more of these credits for free up front. So for my overall summary, I'll say this. Having these AI tools now at the forefront of the application was inevitable, and I think that this makes a lot of sense. The features themselves were released over the past 6 to 12 months, which in a way then makes this release feel like a lot of marketing hype. But it paves a way for Airtable to be able to release new AI features to its customers without every single feature feeling like a new bolt-on. I'd be curious to hear your take in the comments below. And as always, if you need help with building out Airtable for your business, don't hesitate to reach out to our website at automationhelpers.com, where we're offering free 30-minute consultations.